The Mississippi River is the chief river of the second largest drainage system on the North American continent, second only to the Hudson Bay drainage system. The stream is entirely within the United States although its drainage basin reaches into Canada, its source is Lake Itasca in northern Minnesota and it flows generally south for 2,320 miles 3 to the Mississippi River Delta in the Gulf of Mexico. With its many tributaries, the Mississippi's watershed drains all or parts of 32 U.S. states and two Canadian provinces between the Rocky and Appalachian Mountains. The Mississippi ranks as the fourth longest and fifteenth largest river by discharge in the world. The river either borders or passes through the states of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, Illinois, Missouri, Kentucky, Tennessee, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Louisiana. Native Americans long lived along the Mississippi River and its tributaries. Most were hunter gatherers, but some, such as the Mound Builders, formed prolific agricultural societies. The arrival of Europeans in the 16th century changed the native way of life as first explorers, then settlers, ventured into the basin in increasing numbers. The river served first as a barrier, forming borders for New Spain, New France, and the early United States, and then as a vital transportation artery and communications link. In the 19th century, during the height of the ideology of Manifest Destiny, the Mississippi and several western tributaries, most notably the Missouri, formed pathways for the western expansion of the United States. Formed from thick layers of the river's silt deposits, the Mississippi embayment is one of the most fertile agricultural regions of the country, which resulted in the river's storied steamboat era. During the American Civil War, the Mississippi's capture by Union forces marked a turning point towards victory due to the river's importance as a route of trade and travel, not least to the Confederacy. Because of substantial growth of cities and the larger ships and barges that supplanted riverboats, the first decades of the 20th century saw the construction of massive engineering works such as levees, locks and dams, often built in combination. Since modern development of the basin began, the Mississippi has also seen its share of pollution and environmental problems, most notably large volumes of agricultural runoff, which has led to the Gulf of Mexico dead zone off the delta. In recent years, the river has shown a steady shift towards the Atchafalaya River channel in the delta, a course change would be an economic disaster for the port city of New Orleans. Topic. Name and significance The word Mississippi itself comes from Missy Zippy, the French rendering of the Anishinaab Ojibwe or Algonquin name for the river, Missy Zibi Great River. In the 18th century, the river was the primary western boundary of the young United States, and since the country's expansion westward, the Mississippi River has been widely considered a convenient if approximate dividing line between the eastern, southern, and midwestern United States, and the western United States. This is exemplified by the Gateway Arch in St. Louis and the phrase, Trans-Mississippi, as used in the name of the Trans-Mississippi Exposition. It is common to qualify a regionally superlative landmark in relation to it, such as, the highest peak east of the Mississippi, or the oldest city west of the Mississippi. The FCC also uses it as the dividing line for broadcast call signs, which begin with W to the east and K to the west, mixing together in media markets along the river. Topic: <laughs> Physical geography. The geographical setting of the Mississippi River includes considerations of the course of the river itself, its watershed, its outflow, its prehistoric and historic course changes, and possibilities of future course changes. The New Madrid seismic zone along the river is also noteworthy. These various basic geographical aspects of the river in turn underlie its human history and present uses of the waterway and its adjacent lands. Topic. Divisions. The Mississippi River can be divided into three sections, the Upper Mississippi, the river from its headwaters to the confluence with the Missouri River, the Middle Mississippi, which is downriver from the Missouri to the Ohio River, and the Lower Mississippi, which flows from the Ohio to the Gulf of Mexico. Topic. Upper Mississippi The Upper Mississippi runs from its headwaters to its confluence with the Missouri River at St. Louis, Missouri. It is divided into two sections 
The headwaters, 493 miles 793 kilometers from the source to St. Anthony Falls in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and a navigable channel, formed by a series of man-made lakes between Minneapolis and St. Louis, Missouri, some 664 miles 1069 kilometers. .The source of the Upper Mississippi Branch is traditionally accepted as Lake Itasca, 1,475 feet 450 meters above sea level in Itasca State Park in Clearwater County, Minnesota. The name, Itasca, was chosen to designate the true head. Of the Mississippi River is a combination of the last four letters of the Latin word for truth veritas and the first two letters of the Latin word for head caput. However, the lake is in turn fed by a number of smaller streams. From its origin at Lake Itasca to St. Louis, Missouri, the waterway's flow is moderated by 43 dams. Fourteen of these dams are located above Minneapolis in the Headwaters region and serve multiple purposes, including power generation and recreation. The remaining 29 dams, beginning in downtown Minneapolis, all contain locks and were constructed to improve commercial navigation of the upper river. Taken as a whole, these 43 dams significantly shape the geography and influence the ecology of the upper river. Beginning just below St. Paul, Minnesota, and continuing throughout the upper and lower river, the Mississippi is further controlled by thousands of wing dikes that moderate the river's flow in order to maintain an open navigation channel and prevent the river from eroding its banks. The head of navigation on the Mississippi is the Coon Rapids Dam in Coon Rapids, Minnesota. Before it was built in 1913, steamboats could occasionally go upstream as far as St. Cloud, Minnesota, depending on river conditions. The uppermost lock and dam on the Upper Mississippi River is the Upper St. Anthony Falls Lock and Dam in Minneapolis. Above the dam, the river's elevation is 799 feet 244 meters. Below the dam, the river's elevation is 750 feet 230 meters. This 49-foot drop is the largest of all the Mississippi River locks and dams. The origin of the dramatic drop is a waterfall preserved adjacent to the lock under an apron of concrete. St. Anthony Falls is the only true waterfall on the entire Mississippi River. The water elevation continues to drop steeply as it passes through the gorge carved by the waterfall. After the completion of the St. Anthony Falls Lock and Dam in 1963, the river's head of navigation moved upstream, to the Coon Rapids Dam. However, the locks were closed in 2015 to control the spread of invasive Asian carp, making Minneapolis once again the site of the head of navigation of the river. The Upper Mississippi has a number of natural and artificial lakes, with its widest point being Lake Winnebagoshish, near Grand Rapids, Minnesota, over 11 miles 18 kilometers across. Lake Onalaska, created by Lock and Dam No. 7, near La Crosse, Wisconsin, is more than 4 miles 6.4 kilometers wide. Lake Pepin, a natural lake formed behind the delta of the Chippewa River of Wisconsin as it enters the Upper Mississippi, is more than 2 miles .2 kilometers wide. By the time the Upper Mississippi reaches St. Paul, Minnesota, below Lock and Dam No. 1, it has dropped more than half its original elevation and is 687 feet 209 meters above sea level. From St. Paul to St. Louis, Missouri, the river elevation falls much more slowly, and is controlled and managed as a series of pools created by 26 locks and dams. The Upper Mississippi River is joined by the Minnesota River at Fort Snelling in the Twin Cities, the St. Croix River near Prescott, Wisconsin, the Cannon River near Red Wing, Minnesota, the Zumbro River at Wabasha, Minnesota, the Black, La Crosse, and Root Rivers in La Crosse, Wisconsin, the Wisconsin River at Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin, the Rock River at the Quad cities, the Iowa River near Wapello, Iowa, the Skunk River south of Burlington, Iowa, and the Des Moines River at Keokuk, Iowa. Other major tributaries of the Upper Mississippi include the Crow River in Minnesota, the Chippewa River in Wisconsin, the Maquoketa River and the Wapsipinicon River in Iowa, and the Illinois River in Illinois. The Upper Mississippi is largely a multi-thread stream with many bars and islands. From its confluence with the St. Croix River downstream to Dubuque, Iowa, the river is entrenched, with high bedrock bluffs lying on either side. The height of these bluffs decreases to the south of Dubuque, though they are still significant through Savannah, Illinois. This topography contrasts strongly with the Lower Mississippi, which is a meandering river in a broad, flat area, only rarely flowing alongside a bluff as at Vicksburg, Mississippi. Topic. Middle Mississippi. 
The Mississippi River is known as the Middle Mississippi from the Upper Mississippi River's confluence with the Missouri River at St. Louis, Missouri, for 190 miles (310 kilometers) to its confluence with the Ohio River at Cairo, Illinois. The Middle Mississippi is relatively free-flowing. From St. Louis to the Ohio River confluence, the Middle Mississippi falls 220 feet (67 meters) over 180 miles (290 kilometers) for an average rate of 1.2 feet per mile (23 centimeters per kilometer). At its confluence with the Ohio River, the Middle Mississippi is 315 feet (96 meters) above sea level. Apart from the Missouri and Meramec Rivers of Missouri and the Kaskaskia River of Illinois, no major tributaries enter the Middle Mississippi River. <laughs> Lower Mississippi The Mississippi River is called the Lower Mississippi River from its confluence with the Ohio River to its mouth at the Gulf of Mexico, a distance of about 1,000 miles 1, at the confluence of the Ohio and the Middle Mississippi, the long-term mean discharge of the Ohio at Cairo, Illinois is 281,500 cubic feet per second, 7,970 cubic meters per second, while the long-term mean discharge of the Mississippi at Thebes, Illinois, just upriver from Cairo, is 208,200 cu foot per second, 5,900 cubic meters per second. Thus, by volume, the main branch of the Mississippi River system at Cairo can be considered to be the Ohio River and the Allegheny River further upstream, rather than the Middle Mississippi. In addition to the Ohio River, the major tributaries of the Lower Mississippi River are the White River, flowing in at the White River National Wildlife Refuge in east-central Arkansas, the Arkansas River, joining the Mississippi at Arkansas Post, the Big Black River in Mississippi, and the Yazoo River, meeting the Mississippi at Vicksburg, Mississippi. The widest point of the Mississippi River is in the Lower Mississippi portion where it exceeds 1 mile in width in several places. Deliberate water diversion at the Old River control structure in Louisiana allows the Atchafalaya River in Louisiana to be a major distributary of the Mississippi River, with 30% of the Mississippi flowing to the Gulf of Mexico by this route, rather than continuing down the Mississippi's current channel past Baton Rouge and New Orleans on a longer route to the Gulf. Although the Red River is commonly thought to be a tributary, it is actually not, because its water flows separately into the Gulf of Mexico through the Atchafalaya River. Topic. Watershed The Mississippi River has the world's fourth largest drainage basin, watershed, or catchment. The basin covers more than 1,245,000 square miles, 3,220,000 square kilometers, including all or parts of 32 U.S. states and two Canadian provinces. The drainage basin empties into the Gulf of Mexico, part of the Atlantic Ocean. The total catchment of the Mississippi River covers nearly 40% of the landmass of the continental United States. The highest point within the watershed is also the highest point of the Rocky Mountains, Mount Elbert at 14,440 feet 4, meters. In the United States, the Mississippi River drains the majority of the area between the crest of the Rocky Mountains and the crest of the Appalachian Mountains, except for various regions drained to Hudson Bay by the Red River of the North, to the Atlantic Ocean by the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence River, and to the Gulf of Mexico by the Rio Grande, the Alabama and Tombigbee Rivers, the Chattahoochee and Appalachicola Rivers, and various smaller coastal waterways along the Gulf. The Mississippi River empties into the Gulf of Mexico about 100 miles 160 kilometers downstream from New Orleans. Measurements of the length of the Mississippi from Lake Itasca to the Gulf of Mexico vary somewhat, but the United States Geological Survey's number is 2,320 miles 3,730 kilometers. The retention time from Lake Itasca to the Gulf is typically about 90 days. Outflow The Mississippi River discharges at an annual average rate of between 200 and 700,000 cubic feet per second, 7,000 to 20,000 cubic meters per second. Although it is the fifth largest river in the world by volume, this flow is a small fraction of the output of the Amazon, which moves nearly 7 million cubic feet per second, 200,000 cubic meters per second during wet seasons. 
On average, the Mississippi has only 8% the flow of the Amazon River. Fresh river water flowing from the Mississippi into the Gulf of Mexico does not mix into the salt water immediately. The images from NASA's MODIS to the right show a large plume of fresh water, which appears as a dark ribbon against the lighter blue surrounding waters. These images demonstrate that the plume did not mix with the surrounding sea water immediately. Instead, it stayed intact as it flowed through the Gulf of Mexico, into the Straits of Florida, and entered the Gulf Stream. The Mississippi River water rounded the tip of Florida and traveled up the southeast coast to the latitude of Georgia before finally mixing in so thoroughly with the ocean that it could no longer be detected by MODIS. Before 1900, the Mississippi River transported an estimated 400 million metric tons of sediment per year from the interior of the United States to coastal Louisiana and the Gulf of Mexico. During the last two decades, this number was only 145 million metric tons per year. The reduction in sediment transported down the Mississippi River is the result of engineering modification of the Mississippi, Missouri, and Ohio rivers and their tributaries by dams, meander cutoffs, river training structures, and bank revetments and soil erosion control programs in the areas drained by them. Topic: <laughs> Course changes. Over geologic time, the Mississippi River has experienced numerous large and small changes to its main course, as well as additions, deletions, and other changes among its numerous tributaries, and the lower Mississippi River has used different pathways as its main channel to the Gulf of Mexico across the Delta region. Through a natural process known as avulsion or delta switching, the lower Mississippi River has shifted its final course to the mouth of the Gulf of Mexico every thousand years or so. This occurs because the deposits of silt and sediment begin to clog its channel, raising the river's level and causing it to eventually find a steeper, more direct route to the Gulf of Mexico. The abandoned distributaries diminish in volume and form what are known as bayous. This process has, over the past 5,000 years, caused the coastline of South Louisiana to advance toward the Gulf from 15 to 50 miles 24 to 80 kilometers. The currently active delta lobe is called the Birdfoot Delta, after its shape, or the Belize Delta, after La Belize, Louisiana, the first French settlement at the mouth of the Mississippi. Topic: <laughs> Prehistoric courses. The current form of the Mississippi River basin was largely shaped by the Laurentide ice sheet of the most recent ice age. The southernmost extent of this enormous glaciation extended well into the present-day United States and Mississippi Basin. When the ice sheet began to recede, hundreds of feet of rich sediment were deposited, creating the flat and fertile landscape of the Mississippi Valley. During the melt, giant glacial rivers found drainage paths into the Mississippi watershed, creating such features as the Minnesota River, James River, and Milk River Valleys. When the ice sheet completely retreated, many of these temporary Rivers found paths to Hudson Bay or the Arctic Ocean, leaving the Mississippi Basin with many features oversized for the existing rivers to have carved in the same time period. Ice sheets during the Illinoisan stage, about 300,000 to 132,000 years before present, blocked the Mississippi near Rock Island, Illinois, diverting it to its present channel farther to the west, the current western border of Illinois. The Hennepin Canal roughly follows the ancient channel of the Mississippi downstream from Rock Island to Hennepin, Illinois. South of Hennepin, to Alton, Illinois, the current Illinois River follows the ancient channel used by the Mississippi River before the Illinoisan stage. Timeline of outflow course changes c. 5000 BC, the last ice age ended, world sea level became what it is now. c. 2500 BC, Bayou Teche became the main course of the Mississippi. C. 800 BC, the Mississippi diverted further east. C. 200 AD, Bayou Lafourche became the main course of the Mississippi. C. 1000 AD, the Mississippi's present course took over. Before C. 1400 AD, the Red River of the South flowed parallel to the lower Mississippi to the sea. 15th century, Turnbull's Bend in the lower Mississippi extended so far west that it captured the Red River of the South. The Red River below the captured section became the Atchafalaya River. 1831, Captain Henry M. Shreve dug a new short course for the Mississippi through the neck of Turnbull's Bend. 
1833 to November 1873, the Great Raft, a huge log jam in the Atchafalaya River, was cleared. The Atchafalaya started to capture the Mississippi and to become its new main lower course. 1963, the old river control structure was completed, controlling how much Mississippi water entered the Atchafalaya. Cahokia's rise and fall linked to river flooding article in Popular Archaeology Periodical Topic. Historic course changes In March 1876, the Mississippi suddenly changed course near the settlement of Reverie, Tennessee, leaving a small part of Tipton County, Tennessee, attached to Arkansas and separated from the rest of Tennessee by the New River Channel. Since this event was an avulsion, rather than the effect of incremental erosion and deposition, the state line still follows the old channel. The town of Kaskaskia, Illinois once stood on a peninsula at the confluence of the Mississippi and Kaskaskia rivers. Founded as a French colonial community, it later became the capital of the Illinois Territory and was the first state capital of Illinois until 1819. Beginning in 1844, successive flooding caused the Mississippi River to slowly encroach east. A major flood in 1881 caused it to overtake the lower 10 miles of the Kaskaskia River, forming a new Mississippi Channel and cutting off the town from the rest of the state. Later flooding destroyed most of the remaining town, including the original state house. Today, the remaining 2,300-acre island and community of 14 residents is known as an enclave of Illinois and is accessible only from the Missouri side. Topic: New Madrid Seismic Zone. The New Madrid Seismic Zone, along the Mississippi River near New Madrid, Missouri, between Memphis and St. Louis, is related to an Alacogan failed rift that formed at the same time as the Gulf of Mexico. This area is still quite active seismically. Four great earthquakes in 1811 and 1812, estimated at approximately 8 on the Richter magnitude scale, had tremendous local effects in the then sparsely settled area, and were felt in many other places in the Midwestern and Eastern U.S. These earthquakes created Realfoot Lake in Tennessee from the altered landscape near the river. <laughs> Length When measured from its traditional source at Lake Itasca, the Mississippi has a length of 2,320 miles 3 When measured from its longest stream source most distant source from the sea, Brower's Spring in Montana, the source of the Missouri River, it has a length of 3,710 miles, making it the fourth longest river in the world after the Nile, Amazon, and Yangtze. When measured by the largest stream source by water volume, the Ohio River, by extension the Allegheny River, would be the source, and the Mississippi would begin in Pennsylvania. Cultural geography State boundaries The Mississippi River runs through or along ten states, from Minnesota to Louisiana, and is used to define portions of these states' borders, with Wisconsin, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Mississippi along the east side of the river, and Iowa, Missouri, and Arkansas along its west side. Substantial parts of both Minnesota and Louisiana are on either side of the river, although the Mississippi defines part of the boundary of each of these states. In all of these cases, the middle of the riverbed at the time the borders were established was used as the line to define the borders between adjacent states. In various areas, the river has since shifted, but the state borders have not changed, still following the former bed of the Mississippi River as of their establishment, leaving several small isolated areas of one state across the new river channel, contiguous with the adjacent state. Also, due to a meander in the river, a small part of western Kentucky is contiguous with Tennessee, but isolated from the rest of its state. Topic. Communities along the river Many of the communities along the Mississippi River are listed below, most have either historic significance or cultural lore connecting them to the river. They are sequenced from the source of the river to its end. Topic. Bridge crossings The road crossing highest on the upper Mississippi is a simple steel culvert, through which the river locally named Nicolette Creek flows north from Lake Nicolette under Wilderness Road 
To the west arm of Lake Itasca, within Itasca State Park, the earliest bridge across the Mississippi River was built in 1855. It spanned the river in Minneapolis where the current Hennepin Avenue Bridge is located. No highway or railroad tunnels cross under the Mississippi River. The first railroad bridge across the Mississippi was built in 1856. It spanned the river between the Rock Island Arsenal in Illinois and Davenport, Iowa. Steamboat captains of the day, fearful of competition from the railroads, considered the new bridge a hazard to navigation. Two weeks after the bridge opened, the steamboat Effie Afton rammed part of the bridge, setting it on fire. Legal proceedings ensued, with Abraham Lincoln defending the railroad. The lawsuit went to the Supreme Court of the United States, which ruled in favor of the railroad. Below is a general overview of selected Mississippi bridges which have notable engineering or landmark significance, with their cities or locations. They are sequenced from the Upper Mississippi's source to the Lower Mississippi's mouth. Stone Arch Bridge, former Great Northern Railway now pedestrian bridge at St. Anthony Falls connecting downtown Minneapolis with the historic Marcy Holmes neighborhood. I-35 West St. Anthony Falls Bridge, in Minneapolis, opened in September 2008, replacing the I-35 West Mississippi River Bridge which had collapsed catastrophically on August 1, 2007, killing 13 and injuring over 100. Eisenhower Bridge Mississippi River in Red Wing, Minnesota, opened by Dwight D. Eisenhower in November 1960. I-90 Mississippi River Bridge, connects La Crosse, Wisconsin, and Winona County, Minnesota, located just south of Lock and Dam No. 7. Black Hawk Bridge, connects Lansing in Alamakee County, Iowa and rural Crawford County, Wisconsin, locally referred to as the Lansing Bridge and documented in the Historic American Engineering Record. Dubuque, Wisconsin Bridge, connects Dubuque, Iowa, and Grant County, Wisconsin. Julian Dubuque Bridge, joins the cities of Dubuque, Iowa, and East Dubuque, Illinois, listed in the National Register of Historic Places. Savannah Sabula Bridge, a truss bridge and causeway connecting the city of Savannah, Illinois, and the island city of Sabula, Iowa. The bridge carries U.S. Highway 52 over the river, and is the terminus of both Iowa Highway 64 and Illinois Route 64. Added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1999. Fred Schwengel Memorial Bridge, a four-lane steel girder bridge that carries Interstate 80 and connects LeClaire, Iowa, and Rapids City, Illinois. Completed in 1966. I-74 Bridge, connects Bettendorf, Iowa, and Moline, Illinois, originally known as the Iowa-Illinois Memorial Bridge. Government Bridge, connects Rock Island, Illinois and Davenport, Iowa, adjacent to Lock and Dam No. 15, the fourth crossing in this vicinity, built in 1896. Rock Island Centennial Bridge, connects Rock Island, Illinois, and Davenport, Iowa, opened in 1940. Sergeant John F. Baker Jr. Bridge, connects Rock Island, Illinois, and Davenport, Iowa, opened in 1973. Norbert F. Becky Bridge, connects Muscatine, Iowa, and Rock Island County, Illinois, became first U.S. bridge to be illuminated with light-emitting diode LED lights decoratively illuminating the facade of the bridge. Great River Bridge, a cable-stayed bridge connecting Burlington, Iowa, to Gulfport, Illinois. Fort Madison Toll Bridge, connects Fort Madison, Iowa, and unincorporated Neota, Illinois, also known as the Santa Fe Swing Span Bridge, at the time of its construction the longest and heaviest electrified swing span on the Mississippi River. Listed in the National Register of Historic Places since 1999. Keokuk Hamilton Bridge, connects Keokuk, Iowa and Hamilton, Illinois, opened in 1985 replacing an older bridge which is still in use as a railroad bridge. Bayview Bridge, a cable-stayed bridge bringing westbound U.S. Highway 24 over the river, connecting the cities of West Quincy, Missouri, and Quincy, Illinois. Quincy Memorial Bridge, connects the cities of West Quincy, Missouri, and Quincy, Illinois, carrying eastbound U.S. 24, the older of these two U.S. 24 bridges. Clark Bridge, a cable-stayed bridge connecting West Alton, Missouri, and Alton, Illinois, also known as the Super Bridge as the result of an appearance on the PBS program, Nova, built in 1994, carrying U.S. Route 67 across the river. This is the northernmost river crossing in the St. Louis metropolitan area, replacing the old Clark Bridge, a truss bridge built in 1928, named after explorer William Clark. 
Chain of Rocks Bridge – Located on the northern edge of St. Louis, notable for a 22-degree bend occurring at the middle of the crossing, necessary for navigation on the river, formerly used by U.S. Route 66 to cross the Mississippi. Replaced for road traffic in 1966 by a nearby pair of new bridges, now a pedestrian bridge. Eads Bridge – A combined road and railway bridge, connecting St. Louis and East St. Louis, Illinois. When completed in 1874, it was the longest arch bridge in the world, with an overall length of 6,442 feet 1,964 meters. The three ribbed steel arch spans were considered daring, as was the use of steel as a primary structural material, it was the first such use of true steel in a major bridge project. Chester Bridge, a truss bridge connecting Route 51 in Missouri with Illinois Route 150, between Perryville, Missouri, and Chester, Illinois. The bridge can be seen in the beginning of the 1967 film In the Heat of the Night. In the 1940s, the main span was destroyed by a tornado. Bill Emerson Memorial Bridge — Connecting Cape Girardeau, Missouri and East Cape Girardeau, Illinois, completed in 2003 and illuminated by 140 lights. Caruthersville Bridge, a single tower cantilever bridge carrying Interstate 155 and U.S. Route 412 across the Mississippi River between Caruthersville, Missouri and Dyersburg, Tennessee. Hernando de Soto Bridge, a through arch bridge carrying Interstate 40 across the Mississippi between West Memphis, Arkansas, and Memphis, Tennessee. Harahan Bridge, a cantilevered through truss bridge, carrying two rail lines of the Union Pacific Railroad across the river between West Memphis, Arkansas, and Memphis, Tennessee. Frisco Bridge, a cantilevered through truss bridge, carrying a rail line across the river between West Memphis, Arkansas, and Memphis, Tennessee, previously known as the Memphis Bridge. When it opened on May 12, 1892, it was the first crossing of the Lower Mississippi and the longest span in the U. S. listed as a historic civil engineering landmark. Memphis and Arkansas Bridge, a cantilevered through truss bridge, carrying Interstate 55 between Memphis and West Memphis, listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Helena Bridge Greenville Bridge Old Vicksburg Bridge Vicksburg Bridge Natchez Vidalia Bridge John James Audubon Bridge, the second longest cable stayed bridge in the Western Hemisphere, connects Point Coupe and West Feliciana parishes in Louisiana. It is the only crossing between Baton Rouge and Natchez. This bridge was opened a month ahead of schedule in May 2011, due to the 2011 floods. Huey P. Long Bridge, a truss cantilever bridge carrying US 190 airline highway and one rail line between East Baton Rouge and West Baton Rouge parishes in Louisiana. Horace Wilkinson Bridge, a cantilevered through truss bridge, carrying six lanes of Interstate 10 between Baton Rouge and Port Allen in Louisiana. It is the highest bridge over the Mississippi River. Sunshine Bridge Gramercy Bridge Hale Boggs Memorial Bridge Huey P. Long Bridge, in Jefferson Parish, Louisiana, the first Mississippi River span built in Louisiana. Crescent City Connection, connects the east and west banks of New Orleans, Louisiana, the fifth longest cantilever bridge in the world. Topic navigation and flood control A clear channel is needed for the barges and other vessels that make the main stem Mississippi one of the great commercial waterways of the world. The task of maintaining a navigation channel is the responsibility of the United States Army Corps of Engineers, which was established in 1802. Earlier projects began as early as 1829 to remove snags, close off secondary channels and excavate rocks and sandbars. Steamboats entered trade in the 1820s, so the period 1830–1850 became the golden age of steamboats. As there were few roads or rails in the lands of the Louisiana Purchase, river traffic was an ideal solution. Cotton, timber and food came down the river, as did Appalachian coal. The port of New Orleans boomed as it was the trans-shipment point to deep-sea ocean vessels. As a result, the image of the twin stacked, wedding cake Mississippi steamer entered into American mythology. Steamers worked the entire route from the trickles of Montana, to the Ohio River, down the Missouri and Tennessee, to the main channel of the Mississippi. Only with the arrival of the railroads in the 1880s did steamboat traffic diminish. Steamboats remained a feature until the 1920s. Most have been superseded by pusher tugs. A few survive as icons, the Delta Queen and the River Queen for instance. 
a series of 29 locks and dams on the Upper Mississippi, most of which were built in the 1930s, is designed primarily to maintain a 9-foot deep meters channel for commercial barge traffic. The lakes formed are also used for recreational boating and fishing. The dams make the river deeper and wider but do not stop it. No flood control is intended. During periods of high flow, the gates, some of which are submersible, are completely opened and the dams simply cease to function. Below St. Louis, the Mississippi is relatively free-flowing, although it is constrained by numerous levees and directed by numerous wing dams. On the lower Mississippi, from Baton Rouge to the mouth of the Mississippi, the navigation depth is 45 feet 14 meters, allowing container ships and cruise ships to dock at the port of New Orleans and bulk cargo ships shorter than 150 foot 46 meters air draft that fit under the Huey P. Long Bridge to traverse the Mississippi to Baton Rouge. There is a feasibility study to dredge this portion of the river to 50 feet 15 meters to allow new Panamax ship depths. 19th century In 1829, there were surveys of the two major obstacles on the Upper Mississippi, the Des Moines Rapids and the Rock Island Rapids, where the river was shallow and the riverbed was rock. The Des Moines Rapids were about 11 miles 18 kilometers long and just above the mouth of the Des Moines River at Keokuk, Iowa. The Rock Island Rapids were between Rock Island and Moline, Illinois. Both rapids were considered virtually impassable. In 1848, the Illinois and Michigan Canal was built to connect the Mississippi River to Lake Michigan via the Illinois River near Peru, Illinois. The canal allowed shipping between these important waterways. In 1900, the canal was replaced by the Chicago Sanitary and Ship Canal. The second canal, in addition to shipping, also allowed Chicago to address specific health issues typhoid fever, cholera and other waterborne diseases by sending its waste down the Illinois and Mississippi River systems rather than polluting its water source of Lake Michigan. The Corps of Engineers recommended the excavation of a 5-foot deep meters channel at the Des Moines Rapids, but work did not begin until after Lt. Robert E. Lee endorsed the project in 1837. The Corps later also began excavating the Rock Island Rapids. By 1866, it had become evident that excavation was impractical, and it was decided to build a canal around the Des Moines Rapids. The canal opened in 1877, but the Rock Island Rapids remained an obstacle. In 1878, Congress authorized the Corps to establish a 4.5-foot deep meters channel to be obtained by building wing dams which direct the river to a narrow channel causing it to cut a deeper channel, by closing secondary channels and by dredging. The channel project was complete when the Moline Lock, which bypassed the Rock Island Rapids, opened in 1907. To improve navigation between St. Paul, Minnesota, and Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin, the Corps constructed several dams on lakes in the Headwaters area, including Lake Winnebagoshish and Lake Pokagama. The dams, which were built beginning in the 1880s, stored spring runoff which was released during low water to help maintain channel depth. 20th century In 1907, Congress authorized a six-foot deep meters channel project on the Mississippi River, which was not complete when it was abandoned in the late 1920s in favor of the nine-foot deep meters channel project. In 1913, construction was complete on lock and dam No. 19 at Keokuk, Iowa, the first dam below St. Anthony Falls. Built by a private power company, Union Electric Company of St. Louis, to generate electricity originally for streetcars in St. Louis, the Keokuk Dam was one of the largest hydroelectric plants in the world at the time. The dam also eliminated the Des Moines Rapids. Lock and Dam Number no. One was completed in Minneapolis, Minnesota, in 1917. Lock and Dam Number no. Two, near Hastings, Minnesota, was completed in 1930. Before the Great Mississippi Flood of 1927, the Corps' primary strategy was to close off as many side channels as possible to increase the flow in the main river. It was thought that the river's velocity would scour off bottom sediments, deepening the river and decreasing the possibility of flooding. The 1927 flood proved this to be so wrong that communities threatened by the flood began to create their own levee breaks to relieve the force of the rising river. 
The Rivers and Harbors Act of 1930 authorized the 9-foot channel project, which called for a navigation channel 9 feet meters feet deep and 400 feet 120 meters wide to accommodate multiple barge tows. This was achieved by a series of locks and dams, and by dredging. Twenty-three new locks and dams were built on the Upper Mississippi in the 1930s in addition to the three already in existence. Until the 1950s, there was no dam below Lock and Dam 26 at Alton, Illinois. Chain of Rocks Lock, Lock and Dam No. 27, which consists of a low-water dam and an 8.4-mile-long canal, was added in 1953, just below the confluence with the Missouri River, primarily to bypass a series of rock ledges at St. Louis. It also serves to protect the St. Louis city water intakes during times of low water. U.S. government scientists determined in the 1950s that the Mississippi River was starting to switch to the Atchafalaya River Channel because of its much steeper path to the Gulf of Mexico. Eventually the Atchafalaya River would capture the Mississippi River and become its main channel to the Gulf of Mexico, leaving New Orleans on a side channel. As a result, the U.S. Congress authorized a project called the Old River Control Structure, which has prevented the Mississippi River from leaving its current channel that drains into the Gulf via New Orleans, because the large scale of high-energy water flow threatened to damage the structure, an auxiliary flow control station was built adjacent to the standing control station. This $300 million project was completed in 1986 by the Corps of Engineers. Beginning in the 1970s, the Corps applied hydrological transport models to analyze flood flow and water quality of the Mississippi. Dam 26 at Alton, Illinois, which had structural problems, was replaced by the Mel Price Lock and Dam in 1990. The original Lock and Dam 26 was demolished. 21st century The Corps now actively creates and maintains spillways and floodways to divert periodic water surges into backwater channels and lakes, as well as route part of the Mississippi's flow into the Atchafalaya Basin and from there to the Gulf of Mexico, bypassing Baton Rouge and New Orleans. The main structures are the Birds Point New Madrid floodway in Missouri, the Old River Control Structure and the Morganza Spillway in Louisiana, which direct excess water down the west and east sides respectively of the Atchafalaya River, and the Bonnet Carre Spillway, also in Louisiana, which directs floodwaters to Lake Panchartrain see diagram. Some experts blame urban sprawl for increases in both the risk and frequency of flooding on the Mississippi River. Some of the pre-1927 strategy is still in use today, with the Corps actively cutting the necks of horseshoe bends, allowing the water to move faster and reducing flood heights. Topic: History. Topic: Native Americans. The area of the Mississippi River Basin was first settled by hunting and gathering Native American peoples and is considered one of the few independent centers of plant domestication in human history. Evidence of early cultivation of sunflower, a goosefoot, a marsh elder and an indigenous squash dates to the 4th millennium BCE. The lifestyle gradually became more settled after around 1000 BCE during what is now called the Woodland Period, with increasing evidence of shelter construction, pottery, weaving and other practices. A network of trade routes referred to as the Hopewell Interaction Sphere was active along the waterways between about 200 and 500 CE, spreading common cultural practices over the entire area between the Gulf of Mexico and the Great Lakes. A period of more isolated communities followed, and agriculture introduced from Mesoamerica based on the Three Sisters maize, beans and squash gradually came to dominate. After around 800 CE there arose an advanced agricultural society today referred to as the Mississippian culture, with evidence of highly stratified complex chiefdoms and large population centers. The most prominent of these, now called Cahokia, was occupied between about 600 and 1400 CE and at its peak numbered between 8,000 and 40,000 inhabitants, larger than London, England of that time. At the time of first contact with Europeans, Cahokia and many other Mississippian cities had dispersed, and archaeological finds attest to increased social stress. Modern American Indian nations inhabiting the Mississippi Basin include Cheyenne, Sioux, Ojibwe, Potawatomi, Ho Chunk, Fox, Kickapoo, Tamaroa, Moingwena, Quapaw, and Chickasaw. 
The word Mississippi itself comes from Mesipi, the French rendering of the Anishinaab Ojibwe or Algonquin name for the river, Mississippi Great River. The Ojibwe called Lake Itasca Amashkuzo Zagigan Elk Lake and the river flowing out of it Amashkuzo Zibi Elk River. After flowing into Lake Bemidji, the Ojibwe called the river Bemijigamog Zibi River from the traversing lake. After flowing into Cass Lake, the name of the river changes to Gaa Miskwawakokog Zibi Red Cedar River and then out of Lake Winnebagoshish as Winnebigunjish Zibi Miserable Wretched Dirty Water River, Geechee Zibi Big River after the confluence with the Leech Lake River, then finally as Missy Zibi Great River after the confluence with the Crow Wing River. After the expeditions by Giacomo Beltrami and Henry Schoolcraft, the longest stream above the juncture of the Crow Wing River and Geechee Zibi was named. Mississippi River. The Mississippi River Band of Chippewa Indians, known as the Geechee Zibiwininiwag, are named after the stretch of the Mississippi River known as the Geechee Zibi. The Cheyenne, one of the earliest inhabitants of the Upper Mississippi River, called it the Ma Acute Ze Acute Omadae Big Greasy River in the Cheyenne language. The Arapaho name for the river is Bizniaki. The Pawnee name is Kikadit. The Mississippi was spelled Mississippi or Mississippi during French Louisiana and was also known as the Rivière St. Louis. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> European exploration. On May 8, 1541, Spanish explorer Hernando de Soto became the first recorded European to reach the Mississippi River, which he called Rio del Espíritu Santo, River of the Holy Spirit in the area of what is now Mississippi. In Spanish, the river is called Rio Mississippi. French explorers Louis Joliet and Jacques Marquette began exploring the Mississippi in the 17th century. Marquette traveled with a Sioux Indian who named it Ne Tongo, Big River, in Sioux language, in 1673. Marquette proposed calling it the River of the Immaculate Conception. When Louis Joliet explored the Mississippi Valley in the 17th century, natives guided him to a quicker way to return to French Canada via the Illinois River. When he found the Chicago Portage, he remarked that a canal of only half a league, less than two miles 3.2 kilometers, 3 kilometers would join the Mississippi and the Great Lakes. In 1848, the continental divide separating the waters of the Great Lakes and the Mississippi Valley was breached by the Illinois and Michigan Canal via the Chicago River. This both accelerated the development, and forever changed the ecology of the Mississippi Valley and the Great Lakes. In 1682, René-Robert Cavalier, Sieur de La Salle and Henri de Tondy claimed the entire Mississippi River Valley for France, calling the River Colbert River after Jean-Baptiste Colbert and the region La Louisiane, for King Louis XIV. On March 2, 1699, Pierre Le Moyne d'Iberville rediscovered the mouth of the Mississippi, following the death of La Salle. The French built the small fort of La Belize there to control passage. In 1718, about 100 miles (160 kilometers) upriver, New Orleans was established along the River Crescent by Jean Baptiste Le Moyne, Sieur de Bienville, with construction patterned after the 1711 resettlement on Mobile Bay of Mobile, the capital of French Louisiana at the time. Topic colonization Following Britain's victory in the Seven Years' War, the Mississippi became the border between the British and Spanish empires. The Treaty of Paris 1763 gave Great Britain rights to all land east of the Mississippi and Spain rights to land west of the Mississippi. Spain also ceded Florida to Britain to regain Cuba, which the British occupied during the war. Britain then divided the territory into East and West Florida. Article 8 of the Treaty of Paris 1783 states, The navigation of the river Mississippi, from its source to the ocean, shall forever remain free and open to the subjects of Great Britain and the citizens of the United States. With this treaty, which ended the American Revolutionary War, Britain also ceded West Florida back to Spain to regain the Bahamas, which Spain had occupied during the war. In 1800, under duress from Napoleon of France, Spain ceded an undefined portion of West Florida to France. When France then sold the Louisiana Territory to the U.S. in 1803, a dispute arose again between Spain and the U.S. on which parts of West Florida exactly had Spain ceded to France, which would in turn decide which parts of West Florida were now U.S. property versus Spanish property. These aspirations ended when Spain was pressured into signing Pinckney's Treaty in 1795. France reacquired Louisiana from Spain in the secret Treaty of San Ildefonso in 1800. 
The United States then secured effective control of the river when it bought the Louisiana Territory from France in the Louisiana Purchase of 1803. The last serious European challenge to U.S. control of the river came at the conclusion of War of 1812 when British forces mounted an attack on New Orleans. The attack was repulsed by an American army under the command of General Andrew Jackson. In the Treaty of 1818, the U.S. and Great Britain agreed to fix the border running from the Lake of the Woods to the Rocky Mountains along the 49th parallel north. In effect, the U.S. ceded the northwestern extremity of the Mississippi Basin to the British in exchange for the southern portion of the Red River Basin. So many settlers traveled westward through the Mississippi River Basin, as well as settled in it, that Zadok Kramer wrote a guide book called The Navigator, detailing the features and dangers and navigable waterways of the area. It was so popular that he updated and expanded it through 12 editions over a period of 25 years. The colonization of the area was barely slowed by the three earthquakes in 1811 and 1812, estimated at approximately eight on the Richter magnitude scale, that were centered near New Madrid, Missouri. Topic steamboat era Mark Twain's book, Life on the Mississippi, covered the steamboat commerce which took place from 1830 to 1870 on the river before more modern ships replaced the steamer. The book was published first in serial form in Harper's Weekly in seven parts in 1875. The full version, including a passage from the then unfinished Adventures of Huckleberry Finn and works from other authors, was published by James R. Osgood and Company in 1885. The first steamboat to travel the full length of the Lower Mississippi from the Ohio River to New Orleans was the New Orleans in December 1811. Its maiden voyage occurred during the series of New Madrid earthquakes in 1811-12. The Upper Mississippi was treacherous, unpredictable and to make traveling worse, the area was not properly mapped out or surveyed. Until the 1840s only two trips a year to the Twin Cities landings were made by steamboats which suggests it was not very profitable. Steamboat transport remained a viable industry, both in terms of passengers and freight until the end of the first decade of the 20th century. Among the several Mississippi River System steamboat companies was the noted Anchor Line, which, from 1859 to 1898, operated a luxurious fleet of steamers between St. Louis and New Orleans. Italian explorer Giacomo Beltrami, wrote about his journey on the Virginia, which was the first steamboat to make it to Fort St. Anthony in Minnesota. He referred to his voyage as a promenade that was once a journey on the Mississippi. The steamboat era changed the economic and political life of the Mississippi, as well as the nature of travel itself. The Mississippi was completely changed by the steamboat era as it transformed into a flourishing tourist's trade. <inaudible> <inaudible> Civil War Control of the river was a strategic objective of both sides in the American Civil War. In 1862 Union forces coming down the river successfully cleared Confederate defenses at Island No. 10 and Memphis, Tennessee, while naval forces coming upriver from the Gulf of Mexico captured New Orleans, Louisiana. The remaining major Confederate stronghold was on the heights overlooking the river at Vicksburg, Mississippi, and the Union's Vicksburg Campaign December 1862 to July 1863, and the fall of Port Hudson, completed control of the Lower Mississippi River. The Union victory ending the Siege of Vicksburg on July 4, 1863, was pivotal to the Union's final victory of the Civil War. 20th and 21st centuries The Big Freeze of 1918-19 blocked river traffic north of Memphis, Tennessee, preventing transportation of coal from southern Illinois. This resulted in widespread shortages, high prices, and rationing of coal in January and February. In the spring of 1927, the river broke out of its banks in 145 places. During the Great Mississippi Flood of 1927 and inundated 27,000 square miles square kilometers to a depth of up to 30 feet. In 1962 and 1963, industrial accidents spilled 3.5 million U.S. gallons 13 million L of soybean oil into the Mississippi and Minnesota rivers. The oil covered the Mississippi River from St. Paul to Lake Pepin, creating an ecological disaster and a demand to control water pollution. On October 20, 1976, the automobile ferry, MV George Prince, was struck by a ship traveling upstream as the ferry attempted to cross from Destrehan, Louisiana, to Luling, Louisiana. 
78 passengers and crew died, only 18 survived the accident. In 1988, the water level of the Mississippi fell to 10 feet meters below zero on the Memphis gauge. The remains of wooden-hulled water craft were exposed in an area of 4.5 acres square meters on the bottom of the Mississippi River at West Memphis, Arkansas. They dated to the late 19th to early 20th centuries. The state of Arkansas, the Arkansas Archaeological Survey, and the Arkansas Archaeological Society responded with a two-month data recovery effort. The fieldwork received national media attention as good news in the middle of a drought. The Great Flood of 1993 was another significant flood, primarily affecting the Mississippi above its confluence with the Ohio River at Cairo, Illinois. Two portions of the Mississippi were designated as American Heritage Rivers in 1997 the lower portion around Louisiana and Tennessee, and the upper portion around Iowa, Illinois, Minnesota, and Missouri. The Nature Conservancy's project called America's Rivershed Initiative," announced a report card assessment of the entire basin in October 2015 and gave the grade of D+. The assessment noted the aging navigation and flood control infrastructure along with multiple environmental problems. In 2002, Slovenian long-distance swimmer Martin Strell swam the entire length of the river, from Minnesota to Louisiana, over the course of 68 days. In 2005, the Source to Sea expedition paddled the Mississippi and Atchafalaya rivers to benefit the Audubon Society's Upper Mississippi River Campaign. Topic: <laughs> Future. Geologists believe that the Lower Mississippi could take a new course to the Gulf. Either of two new routes, through the Atchafalaya Basin or through Lake Panchartrain might become the Mississippi's main channel if flood control structures are overtopped or heavily damaged during a severe flood, failure of the old river control structure, the Morganza spillway, or nearby levees would likely reroute the main channel of the Mississippi through Louisiana's Atchafalaya Basin and down the Atchafalaya River to reach the Gulf of Mexico south of Morgan City in southern Louisiana. This route provides a more direct path to the Gulf of Mexico than the present Mississippi River channel through Baton Rouge and New Orleans. While the risk of such a diversion is present during any major flood event, such a change has so far been prevented by active human intervention involving the construction, maintenance, and operation of various levees, spillways, and other control structures by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. The old river control structure, between the present Mississippi River Channel and the Atchafalaya Basin, sits at the normal water elevation and is ordinarily used to divert 30% of the Mississippi's flow to the Atchafalaya River. There is a steep drop here away from the Mississippi's main channel into the Atchafalaya Basin. If this facility were to fail during a major flood, there is a strong concern the water would scour and erode the river bottom enough to capture the Mississippi's main channel. The structure was nearly lost during the 1973 flood, but repairs and improvements were made after engineers studied the forces at play. In particular, the Corps of Engineers made many improvements and constructed additional facilities for routing water through the vicinity. These additional facilities give the Corps much more flexibility and potential flow capacity than they had in 1973, which further reduces the risk of a catastrophic failure in this area during other major floods, such as that of 2011. Because the Morganza spillway is slightly higher and well back from the river, it is normally dry on both sides. Even if it failed at the crest during a severe flood, the flood waters would have to erode to normal water levels before the Mississippi could permanently jump channel at this location. During the 2011 floods, the Corps of Engineers opened the Morganza spillway to one quarter of its capacity to allow 150,000 feet 3, sec of water to flood the Morganza and Atchafalaya floodways and continue directly to the Gulf of Mexico, bypassing Baton Rouge and New Orleans. In addition to reducing the Mississippi River crest downstream, this diversion reduced the chances of a channel change by reducing stress on the other elements of the control system. Some geologists have noted that the possibility for course change into the Atchafalaya also exists in the area immediately north of the old river control structure. Army Corps of Engineers geologist Fred Smith once stated, The Mississippi wants to go west. 1973 was a 40 year flood. The big one lies out there somewhere. When the structures can't release all the floodwaters and the levee is going to have to give way. That is when the river's going to jump its banks and try to break through. Another possible course change for the Mississippi River is a diversion into Lake Panchartrain near New Orleans. 
This route is controlled by the Bonnet Carré Spillway, built to reduce flooding in New Orleans. This spillway and an imperfect natural levee about 4 to 6 meters 12 to 20 feet higher all that prevents the Mississippi from taking a new, shorter course through Lake Panchartrain to the Gulf of Mexico. Diversion of the Mississippi's main channel through Lake Panchartrain would have consequences similar to an Atchafalaya diversion, but to a lesser extent, since the present river channel would remain in use past Baton Rouge and into the New Orleans area. Recreation The sport of water skiing was invented on the river in a wide region between Minnesota and Wisconsin known as Lake Pepin. Ralph Samuelson of Lake City, Minnesota, created and refined his skiing technique in late June and early July 1922. He later performed the first water ski jump in 1925 and was pulled along at 80 miles per hour, 130 kilometers per hour by a Curtis flying boat later that year. There are seven National Park Service sites along the Mississippi River. The Mississippi National River and Recreation Area is the National Park Service site dedicated to protecting and interpreting the Mississippi River itself. The other six National Park Service sites along the river are listed from north to south. Effigy Mounds National Monument Gateway Arch National Park includes Gateway Arch Vicksburg National Military Park Natchez National Historical Park New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park Jean Lafitte National Historical Park and Preserve Topic. Ecology The Mississippi Basin is home to a highly diverse aquatic fauna and has been called the mother fauna of North American fresh water. Topic. Fish About 375 fish species are known from the Mississippi Basin, far exceeding other North Hemisphere River Basin exclusively within temperate, subtropical regions, except the Yangtze. Within the Mississippi Basin, streams that have their source in the Appalachian and Ozark Highlands contain especially many species. Among the fish species in the basin are numerous endemics, as well as relics such as paddlefish, sturgeon, gar, and bowfin. Because of its size and high species diversity, the Mississippi Basin is often divided into subregions. The Upper Mississippi River alone is home to about 120 fish species, including walleye, sauger, largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, white bass, northern pike, bluegill, crappie, channel catfish, flathead catfish, common shiner, freshwater drum, and shovelnose sturgeon. Topic. Other fauna In addition to fish, several species of turtles such as snapping, musk, mud, map, cooter, painted and softshell turtles, American alligator, aquatic amphibians such as hellbender, mudpuppy, three-toed amphiuma and lesser siren, and cambarid crayfish such as the red swamp crayfish are native to the Mississippi Basin. Topic. Introduced species Numerous introduced species are found in the Mississippi and some of these are invasive. Among the introductions are fish such as Asian carp, including the silver carp that have become infamous for outcompeting native fish and their potentially dangerous jumping behavior. They have spread throughout much of the basin, even approaching but not yet invading the Great Lakes. The Minnesota Department of Natural Resources has designated much of the Mississippi River in the state as infested waters by the exotic species zebra mussels and Eurasian watermilfoil. Topic: Cultural references. Topic: Literature. Herman Melville's novel The Confidence Man portrayed a Canterbury Tales-style group of steamboat passengers whose interlocking stories are told as they travel down the Mississippi River. The novel is written both as cultural satire and a metaphysical treatise. Many of the works of Mark Twain deal with or take place near the Mississippi River. One of his first major works, Life on the Mississippi, is in part a history of the river, in part a memoir of Twain's experiences on the river, and a collection of tales that either take place on or are associated with the river. Twain's most famous work, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, is largely a journey down the river. The novel works as an episodic meditation on American culture with the river having multiple different meanings including independence, escape, freedom, and adventure.
William Faulkner uses the Mississippi River and Delta as the setting for many hunts throughout his novels. It has been proposed that in Faulkner's famous story The Bear, young Ike first begins his transformation into a man, thus relinquishing his birthright to land in Yaknapatafa County through his realizations found within the woods surrounding the Mississippi River. Much of Edna Ferber's 1926 novel Show Boat takes place on the Mississippi River. The novel is the basis for the 1927 musical play of the same title by Jerome Kern and Oscar Hammerstein II. Jonathan Rabin's Old Glory, An American Voyage, a 1981 travel book describing the author's single-handed journey by boat down the river, was the winner of the Royal Society of Literature's Heinemann Award and the Thomas Cook Travel Book Award. Topic. Music The song, When the Levee Breaks, made famous in the version performed by Led Zeppelin on the album Led Zeppelin IV, was composed by Memphis Minnie McCoy in 1929 after the Great Mississippi Flood of 1927. Ferd Grofe composed a set of movements for symphony orchestra entitled, Mississippi Suite, based on the lands the river travels through. Ghost. A song by Indigo Girls, mentions the mighty Mississippi and its watershed's relative narrowness. The stage and movie musical show Boat's central musical piece is the spiritual-influenced ballad, Old Man River. Its composer, Jerome Kern, also composed an orchestral piece entitled, Mark Twain Suite. The musical Big River is based on the travels of Huckleberry Finn down the river. The Johnny Cash song, Big River is about the Mississippi River, and about drifting the length of the river to pursue a relationship that fails. The places mentioned in the song are St. Paul, Davenport, St. Louis, Memphis, Baton Rouge and New Orleans. Louisiana 1927 is a 1974 song written and recorded by Randy Newman on the album Good Old Boys. It tells the story of the Great Mississippi River Flood of 1927 which left 700,000 people homeless in Louisiana and Mississippi. Illinois-born singer Lissy has a song called O Mississippi dedicated to the river. Roll on Mississippi and Mississippi Cotton Picking Delta Town are two classics from Charlie Pride that refer to the Mississippi River. The late Conway Twitty and Loretta Lynn collaborated on the song Louisiana Woman, Mississippi Man. Paul Simon mentions the river and the Mississippi Delta in his song Graceland. Topic see also topic References topic Further reading Ambrose, Stephen. The Mississippi and the Making of a Nation, From the Louisiana Purchase to Today National Geographical Society, 2002 Heavily illustrated Anfinson, John O., Thomas Madigan, Drew M. Forsberg, Patrick Nunnally 2003. The River of History, a Historic Resources Study of the Mississippi National River and Recreation Area. St. Paul, M.N., U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, St. Paul District. OCLC 53911450. Anfinson, John Ogden. Commerce and Conservation on the Upper Mississippi River U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, St. Paul District, 1994 Bartlett, Richard A. 1984. Rolling Rivers, an Encyclopedia of America's Rivers. New York, McGraw-Hill. ISBN 0 07 003910 0. OCLC 10807295. Botkin, Benjamin Albert. A Treasury of Mississippi River Folklore Stories, Ballads and Traditions of the Mid American River Country. Carlander, Harriet Bell. A History of Fish and Fishing in the Upper Mississippi River. PhD Dis. Iowa State College, 1954, online, PDF, Daniel, Pete. Deep and As It Come, The 1927 Mississippi River Flood, University of Arkansas Press, 1977, Fremling, Calvin R. Immortal River, The Upper Mississippi in Ancient and Modern Times, U, of Wisconsin Press, 2005, Popular History Milner, George R. The Late Prehistoric Cahokia Cultural System of the Mississippi River Valley, Foundations, Fluorescence, and Fragmentation, Journal of World Prehistory 1990-4 No. 1 pp. 1-43. Morris, Christopher. The Big Muddy, An Environmental History of the Mississippi and Its Peoples from Hernando de Soto to Hurricane Katrina Oxford University Press, 2012 300 pages, links drought, disease, and flooding to the impact of centuries of increasingly intense human manipulation of the river. Penn, James R. 2001. 
Rivers of the World, a social, geographical, and environmental sourcebook. Santa Barbara, Calif, ABC Clio. ISBN 1-57607-042-5. OCLC 260075679. Smith, Thomas Ruiz River of Dreams, Imagining the Mississippi Before Mark Twain. Baton Rouge, Louisiana State University Press. ISBN 978-0-8071-3233-3. OCLC 182615621. Scott, Quinta The Mississippi, A Visual Biography. Columbia, Missouri, University of Missouri Press. ISBN 978-0-8262-1840-7. OCLC 277196207. Pasquier, Michael 2013. Gods of the Mississippi. Bloomington, Indiana University Press. ISBN 978-0-2530-0806-0. External links Mississippi River, Project of the American Land Conservancy Flood Management in the Mississippi River Friends of the Mississippi River Mississippi River Challenge, Annual Canoe and Kayak Event on the Twin Cities Stretch Mississippi River Field Guide Mississippi National River and Recreation Area MN, from the NPS Mississippi River Facts from the NPS Mark Twain's Mississippi, from the Digital Library of Northern Illinois University Interactive Detailed Satellite Photos and Zoomable USGS Topographic Quad Maps of the Lower Mississippi, the Alternative course for the river, and the various control structures and floodways Lower Mississippi Valley, Engineering Geology Mapping Program, PDF files of publications about and maps of the geology of the Mississippi River Valley and its tributaries. Ecoregions of the Mississippi Alluvial Plain Map. Old Man River Loses His Kinks. April 1942, Popular Science article on 1930-40s project to improve barge navigation between Helena and Natchez The short film, The River 1938, is available for free download at the Internet Archive. The short film, The River Part 2 1937, is available for free download at the Internet Archive. The short film, The Valley of the Giant, Mississippi River Story is available for free download at the Internet Archive Geographic data related to Mississippi River at OpenStreetMap Roundtable discussion on Imagining the River, University of Minnesota, 2009 MRTIS, Mississippi River Traffic Information System